The title of today's message is The Word Works. The Word Works. I want to talk today about the power of God's Word. It says in Hebrews 4.12 that the Word of God is living and active. It's alive. It's more than just head knowledge. There's a power actually in the Word. In Psalm 119.11, the psalmist says, I've hid your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. He's talking there about the power of the word. It works. It's not human effort, but it's the word working in our lives. Jesus said in John 8.31 and 32, he said, if you abide in my word, You are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. There's a chain reaction there. We abide in the word, we live in it, we get in it uh, in our lives, and then we will know the truth, we'll experience it. That word know uh, is interpreted, uh, the Greek word is feel. It's an intimacy like a husband and wife uh, in, in a physical relationship. And it produces something. When we know it, we abide, then we know it's intimate with us. And the truth is what makes us free. It's interesting that he says, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And so discipleship is not having people act like Jesus. It's helping people believe like Jesus. We get saved by believing in Jesus. We get free by believing like Jesus. Let me say that again. We get saved by believing in Jesus. We get free by believing like Jesus. And and the word there in for word in John 8, 31, if you abide in my word is logos. Now there's two Greek words that are primarily translated word Uh, In the New Testament, one is logos, the other is rhema. And and logos is like the overall word of God. Rhema is an individual part of the word of God made real to us that we live by and we fight with. Matthew 4, 4 says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds in the mouth of God. Word is, it's in that Verse is rhema. We live by what we believe God has said to us. The quality of our lives depends on our identifying what we believe God has said. Ephesians 6, 17 says, take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which is the rhema of God. Fight with what you believe God has said. Now, what's amazing is that when we abide in his word, we will know the truth. Now, truth is really... Another way of saying rhema, because we can abide in the word, that that word again is logos. If we abide in the overall word of God, then we're going to know the truth and we're, we're going to have it come alive to us in such a way that it's going to make us free. It's going to cause something to happen. Joshua 1.8, the Lord told Joshua as he's assuming leadership and is ready to take the children of Israel into the promised land. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may do according to all that is written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous and be of good success. It's interesting here that, again, we see a chain reaction. We see a cause and effect. We see you do one thing, certain other things are going to follow. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Speak it. Get the word in your mouth. You shall meditate in it. And that word meditate means to mutter. It means to imagine. uh, It it means to ponder. It means even to roar. It means to speak. And if you meditate in the word day and night, and I've been talking recently in podcasts about Goliath coming out in the morning and evening for 40 days, lies sound more real in the morning and evening. Listen, this is... uh, if we're only listening to what the enemy's saying and not having an intentional plan to abide in the word or to meditate in the word, then obviously we're, we're, we're going to have emotional issues. We're going to be restricted in our, our experience. So in Joshua 1.8, it says, okay, 
get the word in your mouth, meditate it in day and night, that then you will do according to all that is written in it. It says it's going to cause you to obey. It's going to cause you to obey. And it says, then you will make your way prosperous and be of good success. Now, that's another way of saying freedom. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Success, prosperity. We've talked even last week and the week before, I believe, in Psalm 1, where it's talking about the blessed man. It says that uh, his delight is in the law of the Lord and in it he meditates day and night. And it goes, it says, hey, there's going to be good things going to happen. His leaf will not wither. He's going to be like a tree planted by the streams of uh, living water, yielding fruit in season. And then it says, whatever he does shall prosper. There's a chain reaction of fruit, leaves not withering, there, there's life, and whatever he does shall prosper. Again, it, it's freedom. The word works. The word works in, in our lives. There's another verse in James 1 where it says in verse 21, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Now, he's talking to people already saved. Receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. The, the word itself, our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions, and the word itself will save our thinking, will save our will, will cause us in our will to do the right thing, and, and it'll bring freedom to our emotions. So the word works. The word itself is powerful. The more word we get in us is the, the more it's going to work. I've shared in the last year or so, I've been meditating on 17 chapters of the Bible, Galatians 1 to 6, Ephesians 1 to 3, Colossians 1 and 2, Romans 4 through 8, and Hebrews 4. I, I've been meditating on those and abiding in those chapters in the morning. And it's been powerful. And it's getting deeper. And it's bringing freedom to me. I'm starting to know it. Wow. I'm reading that over and over again. And I, I do believe that we need to get into the overall Word of God. I'm listening in the evening to uh, Bible on uh, audio Bible. Uh, last night, I listened to Mark 15, the crucifixion, and I want to get the whole word in me. But also, I know that there's certain passages, there's certain parts of the Bible that I need to abide in. There's certain promises that I need to abide in because the more I abide in them, they're gonna, I'm going to know the truth. I'm going to feel the truth. It's going to be intimate with me. And so even in your life, how, how can you increase the abiding? And I take walks. I take walks with my dog. I love to talk out loud. Uh, much of my prayer life, I, I pace in my prayer life. I like to get alone. I like to talk. I like to pray through the Bible at, at times. Or, and, but I love to just talk out loud. You're crazy if you don't talk to yourself. It's one of my main ways of abiding in the Word. And, and I abide in certain passages pretty much every day. I abide in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. I, I abide in that pretty much every day. I think about it. All right. What a, I, I combat worry with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, you're working. Thank you, you're doing it. Thank you that your word, uh, it, it, you are uh, guarding my heart and my mind. I, I meditate and I speak out loud. Psalm 37, verse four, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Lord, woo, I can't wait to see what you're gonna do in this situation. I can't wait. I'm abiding. I don't know how you're gonna do it, but you're gonna do it. I'm abiding in Hebrews 4 about rest and entering in his rest. And he, those who believe do enter his rest and, and just really recognizing, oh, wow, 
that you said in verse one of Hebrews four that we're to fear lest we not enter. We fall short of it. Verse 11 of Hebrews 4, you say, labor to enter his rest. And, and so I'm abiding in, again, I'm saying, all right, what I believe, if I'm not at rest, then I'm really not believing it. I'm not, I'm, if I'm not at rest about what's going on in my nation, I'm not believing that you've got solutions. I'm not believing I'm significant. I'm not believing that uh, my prayers are working and, or, or so on. And there's others that I do as well. But it's the abiding in his word. And I remember years ago, I, I did a fun teaching on the five levels of Bible reading. And I'll just quickly uh, go over that. And I use the word sword, S-W-O-R-D, as a, this is a Bible study method that might help you as I'm talking about abiding. And and so the S is a, is a scan. You scan the word. It's kind of like Ephesians 5.26, where it says the washing of the water of the word and just getting the word in it, getting content, getting, uh, uh, listening to it, reading it, because it washes us. The next step of this Bible reading is W is wait and meditate. Okay, stop. What, what do you believe What's standing out to you in what you've just heard? Whether it's in a message, sermon you're hearing, Bible reading, what stands out? And then the O is get one personal word. One personal word. What, what do you believe is the most important thing you just heard? That The most important thing that was alive to you in this. And then the R is resist. Resist lies. It, and it's, it, I believe it's going to happen, a chain reaction. You're going to start resisting lies, but just get it in your mouth. Get that truth in your mouth. Resist the lies that seem to be the opposite of that. And then the D is defeat them. Just keep keep at it. Keep abiding in that truth. Think about it. Uh, and you'll find yourself defeating lies. I see in your life right now, you as a listener of this podcast, that the Lord is releasing grace on you in your Bible reading time. And he's going to even give you creative ideas of how to, of how to abide in his word, meditate on his word. And I want to tell you this, the word works. The word works. It's discipleship is not working harder. It's having the word work. He's, he said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The more that we get into the word, the more it works. That's how discipleship is primarily to work. It's an inside-out job. It's desires changing. It's revelation coming. And yes, as on this journey, we will need other things, you know, other ways to help us, you know, getting people in our lives. At times we need good accountability in areas because it's not working yet. But I want to let you know, it is working more and it will work and it's going to make you free. Wow. Well, I just, uh, I love the word. I love the Bible. And I see you again in a season of powerful revelation in the Word. By the way, let me just say one more thing. And I've taught recently on the apostolic prayer in Ephesians 1, where the great apostle Paul was concerned. As he's praying for the people, he wasn't concerned about, his highest concern wasn't about particular needs in their life, financial needs, health needs, the, his primary concern was that they would have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And because we can live our lives without that. And he, the prayers from Ephesians 1, 15 to 19, he says, uh, I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be open, that you would know. There's that word know again. Because we can live without knowing. And so even as we read the word, believing for revelation, thank you, Lord, for revelation. And he said, there's three things I want you to know in the knowledge of him. One is your, uh, your, that you are significant and what you're doing is significant. 
It's called the hope of his calling. So I want you to know the hope of your calling. Two, he wants us to know we have unlimited resources. By the, the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saint. I want you to know that. And then number three, he wants us to know that there's no limitations on our life. No limits. And he says the incredible power towards those who believe. The greatness of his power towards us. And so it is this revelation. And so abiding, we're believing the Lord for that we are going to have incredible revelation. We are people of the word. The word is powerful. The word works. The word is living and active. I've hid your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. The word, as we meditate on it, will cause us to obey. And then we will make our way prosperous and be of good success. Breakthrough in your Bible reading. Hey, if you like this podcast, why don't you tell somebody else about it? Hey, we're doing our Abounding Hope and Joy Conference, May 3rd and 4th, here in Redding, California, here in 2024. If you're interested in that, go to ignitinghopeacademy.com. We also got a powerful thing for marriages that is happening as well. You can find that at ignitinghopeacademy.com. We're going to be doing my course, Fully Convinced, coming up in the summer. That will be happening soon in a, in a couple months. Eight week online course. It's my, I believe it's my most powerful book, Fully Convinced The Art of Decision Making. A bad decision made in faith has a greater likelihood of success than a good decision made in doubt. And that is a truth. Obviously, I'm not talking about sinning in faith, but the Lord, this is a season where the Lord is, uh, delivering us from doubt, double-mindedness, passivity, doing things out of duty and obligation rather than in faith. And anytime we attach faith to what we're doing, we get cheerfulness, energy, and power. Anyhow, look for that. Uh, If you're on our email list, ignitinghope.com, you'll receive info on that. If you're interested in more info and wanting to know what we're doing here at Igniting Hope, then You can sign up for our newsletter there at our website, and you can go to our our course platform, ignitinghopeacademy.com. Hey, Steve Backlin here from Igniting Hope Ministries. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. And we are here at Igniting Hope to ignite your hope. There's no hopeless circumstances. There's just people who do not have hope. And once people get true hope, circumstances cannot stay the same. Hope's an unstoppable force. Hope is the belief that the future will be better than the present, and we have the power to help make it so. We felt, my wife and I felt like the Lord said, Stephen, Wendy, I give you permission to be hopeless about anything that I'm hopeless about. And never once have we heard, yep, Steve, I'm hopeless about that. That situation so bad, even prayer is pointless. <laughs> never once have we heard the Lord say that. And we all have at least one situation in our life that's screaming at us saying, this really is hopeless. We all have at least one, probably more than one. But it's not. And here's the thing. The Bible says in Romans 12, too, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformation is seeing the promises of God getting into our lives. And hope, increasing hope, is the evidence we're renewing our mind with truth instead of lies. Decreasing hope is the evidence we're renewing our mind with lies instead of truth. So the more hope that we're getting in our lives or an area of our life is the indicator of of the increasing manif- likelihood of, man- of soon manifestation of transformation in that area. And remember, too, the joy of the Lord is our strength. A merry heart is good like medicine. I used to say, well, I'll be joyful when all my uncertainties are over, when all my um, inner battles are over when when I'm liking everything I'm doing, when all the people in my life are doing what they're, what I think they should be doing, when I have all the money I need, not hearing any negative news in the media, then I'll be joyful. (laughs) 
The Lord says, you don't need joy then, you need joy now. You, need, you don't need joy at the end of the battle, you need joy in the middle of the battle. For per, pretty much everybody listening today, today is just not a good day to be radically joyful. <laughs> you know, I've never really found a convenient time to be radically joyful. It's going to be, it's, there's going to be a decision. There's going to be a time where we just go for it, where we say, you know, I'm not, I'm, I am going to pursue joy. I'm going to find out why Paul said in, in Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, rejoice. And just like you, I've got things right now. I've got a lot of things going on. I've got uncertainties. I've got things that I wish were different. Uh, I've got personal areas that I want to grow in, that I'm not where I want to be. But you know what? The joy of the Lord is my strength. And a merry heart is good like medicine. And we increase joy by thanksgiving, by focusing on what we have rather than what we don't have, focusing on how far we've come rather than focusing on how far we need to go, uh, focusing on what God is doing rather than what we think he's not. That brings joy. And then we also uh, stir up our joy by delighting in the Lord. And I've shared even earlier in this podcast about delighting in the Lord, the Psalm 37, verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And the delighter is delighting with unfulfilled desires. The delighter is delighting in the context of that verse with things that he or she wants to see happen that haven't happened yet. They're called desires. And it's interesting that it's in the delighting that's the key, because faith people with hope are, are delighting while they're waiting. They're living while they're waiting, but faith people who are just believing for things but don't have hope, they're waiting to live. They're waiting for something to happen. They're waiting for something to change before they live. But it's in the living now. And right now, I just see God releasing over you a grace to live now, to delight. Lord, I can't wait to see how you're gonna do it. I don't know how you're gonna do it, but you're going to do it. <laughs> Woohoo! I'm so excited. Hope, hope is excited about the future. That's really another term for hope. Hope is excited about the future because we believe we have a future. The psalmist said in Psalm 27, I would have lost heart unless I believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hey, God bless you today. I, I'm hearing over you, Proverbs 3 is going to speak to you in this season. I'm hearing that there's a relational conflict, that God's got a supernatural breakthrough that's happening in that. I'm hearing that there's grace for you to forgive and to let go of that thing. I'm also uh, seeing that provision is coming to you from a source you do not expect, and, and finally, there's, there's miracles. There's a miracle anointing that's going to be released through you at a level you've never seen. Bolivia is key in this hour. Ecuador is key in this hour. Cambodia is key in this hour. There, there's massive influence through Igniting Hope uh, listeners in those areas. France uh, as well. We bless you. Thanks so much for listening to this podcast.